We learnt last month that the UK annual inflation rate was 0.4% in February, or at least so the Office for National Statistics would have us believe. In the US, meanwhile, it is 1.7%. Who believes this stuff? Today we talk inflation. It is everywhere except where we measure it. I was having some fun on Twitter the other day, like so many of us, wasting time that could have been better spent on productive endeavour, posting examples of how there is, in inverted commas, no inflation. These were all news headlines from just the past few days. Steel prices have more than trebled this year. House prices in the southwest of the UK rose by 17% last year, while a first time buyer in London now needs a deposit of £132,000. The era of cheap flights is ending, says CNBC, while British Airways is raising prices for frequent flyer tickets. Food prices are soaring faster than inflation and incomes, reports Bloomberg. In the UK, they've risen by, risen by 8% since January, says an index compiled for the BBC, while meat and fish are up by 22%. Note that this is a global phenomenon, with some nations now looking at price caps. With soaring metals prices, in particular the prices of palladium and rhodium, catalytic Catalytic converter thefts are on the rise again. There's a whole account on Twitter dedicated to posting CCTV footage of catalytic converter thieves in action. Dog theft is on the rise too, by the way, because puppy prices have skyrocketed. I bought my miniature poodle, Frodo, who I'm currently walking, for £500 ten years ago. Today, he would cost me £4,000. Base metal prices, notably copper, iron, tin and nickel, are at multi-year highs. Commodity prices are 68% higher than last year, says the engineering record. Wheat, corn, oats, sugar, soybeans, palm oil. It's hard to find a grain or a soft commodity that isn't in a runaway bull market. Even crude oil went to three-year uh, highs a couple of weeks ago. It pulled back a little bit now. There is inflation in financial assets too. Stock markets, especially in the US, continue rising. They're at record highs. As for gilts and bonds, if I wanted to secure an annual yield of £50,000 12 or 15 years ago, it would have cost me a million quid. Now it costs me 10 times that, using round numbers. Is anything undervalued anymore? A wiser head than me on uh, one of my Signal chat groups told me to start taking profits in this bull market the other day. Which bull market, I asked? There are so many. Good point, he said. The dodgy one. I don't know which one is the dodgy one. Is it tech? Is it Bitcoin? Is it commodities? Is it government bonds? They're all riding the tide of funny money. The only places where you could argue that there is actual value to be had is in precious metals, but few seem to care about them. Now we have gold 2.0 in the form of Bitcoin. Value can also be found in value stocks themselves, in the real economy, especially in the UK, where the Brexit discount is still on offer. But then again, I'm not even sure the real economy exists anymore. I haven't been more than a couple of miles from my house in what seems like months. As these examples hopefully illustrate, inflation is everywhere you look, except in the government statistics that measure it. And there's good reason for that. Governments cannot afford an environment where rates are three or five percent. At that point, everything breaks down. And the solution is these dodgy measures of inflation, hallowed economic models that have nothing to do with real life. High government debt burdens are manageable, says Tim, Tim Bond of Odie Wealth, so long as the real interest rate on the debt remains below the real growth rate of the economy. That, then, is the game. But longer term, governments have got a real problem on their hands keeping a lid on this. 
As Bond says, household savings are at record highs. In the US, they're over $2 trillion. That's 10% of US GDP. The US has stopped measuring M2 as a result. M2 is a measure of money supply that includes cash, current account deposits and other highly liquid near cash assets. In the UK, household savings are similarly high at 9% of GDP. In short, the last time money supply growth was this rampant after 2008, the money went to places where it was unlikely to be spent, shoring up bank balance sheets and so on. This time around, it's gone into the real economy, which means keeping a lid on inflation, or should I say inflation statistics, is going to be that much harder. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll be back with another video very soon. Until then, cheerio.